Hi and welcome to this video. This is the first video in the series on Achievement Standard AS91166 which is an NCEA Level 2 Achievement Standard called Demonstrate Understanding of Chemical Reactivity. In today's video I'm going to very briefly discuss, give an overview of this standard and then we're going to do a bit of a recap on uh, rates of reaction and collision theory from the level 1 acids and bases standard for those of you who have done that previously. So, um, first off this topic, um, there are three really distinct parts to this topic and some NCEA exam papers are nice enough that they basically have one question on each of these parts. Some years they mix and match them up so it's not always that way. So the first part is on rates of reaction and like I said that is largely a recap on level 2. There's just a couple of little bits that are different which I will discuss. The second part is on chemical equilibrium. So what is a an equilibrium reaction? How do we know when we've got equilibrium using equilibrium constants and things like that? And the last section is um, some basic stuff on acids and bases. Bit more than what you will have done in level one so this is looking at calculating pH, um, discussing strong and weak acids and bases in terms of their dissociation reaction with water that sort of thing. Probably won't make any sense right now but by the time you finish this topic I hope it will make sense. Okay so starting off with rates of reaction um, I'm just going to briefly revise collision theory and talk about the effect of concentration pressure and surface area on rate of reaction um, and then I will have two subsequent videos on this topic one looking at temperature activation energy and catalysts and one looking at really what happens throughout a reaction in terms of the rate so first off collision theory so collision theory states that for a reaction to occur particles must collide with enough force or energy and the correct orientation now there is a great video that I will that I do recommend. Um, it's a TED talk um, by Aaron Sims on rates of reaction and dates for the dance. Um, if you haven't watched that before, please do. I'll try and link it in the comment box below later. Um, but basically, the idea is that for two particles to react, they have to collide in the right way. Now, the bits I've got in bold are the really key things that you need to make sure go into your answer paper. So the first thing to realize is that when you have with concentration, at higher concentrations you have more particles in the same volume. Okay, it's not there are more particles or less particles, it is that in a given volume, let's say in 100 mils, there will be more particles at a higher concentration than there would be at a lower concentration. In that volume. Now because there are more particles in that same volume at a higher concentration then the chances of them colliding will be greater which will then mean that you get a greater chance of a successful collision occurring. So not all collisions are successful but you need a collision before a collision can be successful. So therefore at higher concentrations you will have more successful collisions every second or per unit time and therefore a higher rate of reaction. You will not get full marks if you do not state that concentration relates to particles in a given volume or that rate is to do with successful collisions every second. Okay, that is the key thing about these two things. They are like particles per volume, collisions per second. Okay, so that's concentration. Pressure is just like concentration for a gas. So again, pressure determines how many particles you've got in a given volume. Um, and therefore you're going to have more collisions, therefore more successful collisions, therefore a faster rate, so more successful collisions per second. So that is, you know, I cannot stress enough those key phrases. Particles in a given volume, collisions per second. And remember, if you're saying you've got more particles in the same volume, that not only leads to more successful collisions, but to get more successful collisions, you've got to start off with just more collisions. Okay, the third one I'm going to talk about here briefly 
is the effect of surface area. So surface area is what you get when you react a solid, usually with an aqueous solution, so think carbonate and acid or metal and acid or something like that. Increasing the surface area, usually by grinding up the particles or breaking the particles from big pieces to small pieces, increases the surface area. So any time you've got something as a solid lump versus something as a powder, then the chances are you're changing the surface area. When the surface area increases, the number of available particles also increases, available or exposed particles. Therefore, there will be a greater chance for a collision to occur, therefore more successful collisions per second and a greater rate of reaction. Okay, I hope this has been a useful intro to rates of reaction. Please do watch that video that I'm going to link below um, on rates of reaction and dates for the dance. It visualizes this really nicely. But hopefully for most of you this will simply be recap from last year. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.